Good morning. We're the Davis family, and uh, today's Advent reader. Lighting the candle is a simple but yet profound act. It's a testimony to the power of light over darkness. As we light this fourth candle of Advent, we continue our journey to Christmas. The fourth candle of Advent is called the love candle. And as we anticipate Christmas, let us remember our loving Savior. How he came once as a baby, the world through him might be saved. And how we return in glory, the words of Zephaniah. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take the great delight in you and his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. How do we know Jesus came in love and demonstrate love? John 15, 9 and 13 and Romans 5, 8. As Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one life for one's friends. But God demonstrates his own love for us. For in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And what does this mean for the followers of Jesus Christ? Jesus told his disciples in John 13, 34 through 35, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. For you must love one another by this Everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. And scripture reminds us that in 1 John 4.19. We love because he first loved us. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, so we have something very special going on this morning. Uh, we have a child, actually children, dedication. So I want to invite Josh and Jessica Gregg to come on up to the stage with Khaleesi and Aria. If you guys could give it up for them, I would be grateful. I'd say they like you guys. Is that fair? Hey, can uh, just, I don't know if you guys know this, um, but Khaleesi's been sick, and I know this day has probably been a little bit of a stressor with having a sick child on your hands. Is that, is that fair a little bit? So we're glad that you guys pressed through this morning and uh, just to, to be here today. Who are you waving at, Aria? Who are you waving at? Who are you waving at? I'm waving at Anna. Anna, okay. Hi, Anna. Hi. <laughs> so, um, why do we dedicate children and not baptize them? Baptism is reserved for somebody who has given their life to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so, baptism is a practice or a profession of that faith. So what do you do until you can understand what Jesus did? You have to do what any child does. You have to lean on your parents. And so that's what children's dedication is, is the opportunity for us as a church and as the parents to say, until Aria and Khaleesi are old enough to make those professions, we are going to show them Jesus as much as we possibly can. And so today, I just have a few vows that I want you guys to agree with me, and I'm going to read a statement, and then after that, it's just a matter of saying that, that we do. And it has something to do with you guys completely separate as, as people, as man and wife, but also as parents. And so Josh and Jessica, do you guys dedicate yourselves wholeheartedly to pursue your relationship with God? By trusting in the finished saving work of Jesus, depending on the Holy Spirit to guide you, to direct your life, knowing that in the life that you will model, this model will shape your children ever more than any words you guys say. Do you agree to that? All right. 
do you guys dedicate yourselves to faithfully pursue a vibrant relationship with each other? Sacrificing loving one another, dating each other, <laughs> prioritizing each other over the work and even your children. Seeking help, guidance from your church, your family to help your relationship thrive and knowing that one of your best gifts that you can ever give your children is a joyful and godly marriage. Amen. Amen. They were confused. Should we speak? Should we not speak? Do you guys dedicate yourselves to actively participating in the church community, investing in people, learning from friends, and using your gifts for the sake of Jesus' kingdom, knowing that your children need input and examples, not only from you as parents, but also from church family in addition to yours. Amen. And do you guys dedicate yourselves to raise your children with biblical love, instruction, and also discipline? Will you take every opportunity that life gives you to diligently teach your children to love the Lord Jesus and observe all that he commands, knowing that your primary responsibility as a parent is to train your child to be Jesus's disciple or follower? Amen. Amen. Are you? You got some good parents, don't you? You got a good mama, good dad. Yeah, they love you a lot, right? And Khaleesi, you got good parents too, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, church family, you know, they've made all these promises, but it's up to us as well. It's up to us to invest ourselves, both our time, our resources, but also our prayers. And so right now what I want us to do is I want us to stand up. Everybody stand up. And I'm going to pray over these children. I'm going to take this mic off if that's okay. And I want us just to lift our hands in agreement and say, you know, we stand in agreement as mom and dad that we're going to be there. We're going to love these kids. We're going to root for them. We're going to shout for joy when, when things go right. And then mom and dad, if you guys will let me, I just want to anoint their heads with oil as we pray.